All right, what is up, guys? Uh, we are here with another episode of Q and A with Coach Trey. I'm Branding and Branding. Branding. Uh, my wife actually makes fun of me because I can't pronounce my name a lot of times. We should all make fun of you today because you had a holy shirt on. Yeah, I have it right here. If you <laughs> saw the promo for the episode, I think it's 106 that came out today, and. Um, I had this shirt on, and there's a massive hole in it. So if you guys are watching mm-hmm. uh, the actual video, you can see this big old hole in my shirt. Uh, so I changed shirts because I looked a little <laughs> bit ridiculous. But yeah, so we are we're hanging out here. Uh, this is another episode of Q and A with Coach Trey. I'm Brandon, like I said, and this is Coach Trey. This is I believe this is 107 that we're up to. So I thought 107 was this morning. 108 is what we're up to. So, here we go. Uh, we're up to um, 108, 10 something. Yeah. So I know we've got Dr. B hanging out with us. Um, if you guys are listening to us, maybe you're seeing this on Facebook. And this is actually live. Uh, if you look for the link over to Crowdcast, it's kind of where we've been doing it at. But um, Trey, we're gonna we're gonna get rolling in some questions here in a minute. If you guys are listening, make sure and drop your questions in. Uh, but how has your your running been so far this week? It's good. It's good. I'm gonna try and do a. Uh it's cross country season for my boys so long runs have to move from saturdays to fridays which is not a ton of fun i'm gonna be honest with you so gotta find a way to squeeze it in so long for me is not long for a lot of those a lot of the, a lot of you guys out there who are logging the miles but it's longish for me it's longish so it's going well going well That's good well um we're gonna go ahead and dive into uh, some of the questions that we've got. Actually, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to throw a link up for you guys. This is something we just started um, actually today. And so uh, we don't take sponsorships on the podcast. Mm-mm. And so what we're trying out is actually have the sponsorship sponsored by you guys if you want to do that. So if you guys head over to uh, connectrunclub.com um slash patreon and if you guys are on crowdcast i'll drop a link in there but um yeah connectrunclub.com forward slash patreon and there's a bunch of different ways you can support the show uh one of the ways is we got a bunch of fun interviews coming up soon and so there's a level where you guys can pay i think like it's like five dollars or something a month and uh, you can get your questions answered by the special guests that we have on as well as these q a shows um in addition we've got some coaching options and some fun stuff in there so if you guys like what we're doing and you want to support us that is the easiest way to do that over at connectrunclub.com forward slash patreon and for two bucks i believe uh we'll give you guys shout outs on air so uh, <laughs> that that was one of the things and it's just it's basically just showing that you support us so but we, we appreciate uh you guys just hanging out and listening even if you don't support and the other thing that we always like to plug is our Facebook group over at connectrunclub.com forward slash Facebook. Mm-hmm. That's totally free. You guys can join it. That's a question. And that's honestly where we get a lot of our, our questions from yeah, is, is over there. It so, is. Well, um, Trey, we are going to go ahead and jump into, we've got, let's see, five or six questions lined up. Okay. And if any, any of you guys are listening in, uh, make sure and um, drop your questions in below. But this was something that I saw popping up several times. And it was uh, folks talking about really celebrating the fact. I think someone had ran like five miles before 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. I saw that this morning. Yep. And then um, it wasn't really a question, but I would love your thoughts on running early. So a lot of us are working full-time jobs. So yep. running before work versus running late. Or maybe even walk through like running at lunch, running at mm-hmm. pros and cons to this for you. Yeah. Because I, I know you do a bunch of them. I do. I do everything. You do? Uh, any, anything you can imagine, yep. I, I do. I run at any time. And, and I... You know, I'm I'm always that's the reason I like to run at different times because I I agree with this to a certain extent. I do love running early, but I also like sleeping. Sleeping is a uh, is a is a big part of my life. And honestly, it's funny. Uh, I I got a message from someone the other day and kind of showed how many hours they sleep a night, and I was like, wow, I can't tell you last time I got in eight good hours of sleep like that. So, uh, but I think I think sleep is important. I think it's good to to run when you like to run, and uh, I, I think running early is good. I don't run early every single day, uh, but I do run early a lot of days. And so, uh, I also we run at lunch from time to time. Uh, now during the summer, it makes it a little more challenging, although I still did it. Uh, running at lunch is a, is a nice option, but uh, I, do, I do enjoy an evening run as well. Uh, I have run as, sometimes after work in the afternoons, but I know people who will run right before bedtime as well. And so, I mean, I think it's good to run at different times and how it can really help you. I know a lot of us have done these relay races and uh, during these relay races, you're going to be running at all times. And I know the same thing for you guys training for ultra marathons. If you're looking at doing a distance of 
you know, 8, 10, 12 hours or more, you're going to be running at all times of the night. So it's important to be able to train at all times. So did a uh, did a race back in June and it was a midnight start. And so, you know, if you haven't if you haven't run at midnight before, then it's going to be a real eye opening experience because running at midnight is different because your body has been active all day long and you've been up and working and standing around. So that's the reason I did go out for a couple of, you know, 9 p.m. runs just to give myself a feel for what it would be like after being on your feet all day. So th- those are all things to think about. And uh, yeah, Ragnar. Ragnar is one of my favorites. You're exactly right. And uh, love that one. And again, that's the reason I do also enjoy some of those doubles from time to time to give your body an idea of what it's like. So yeah, if you love running in the morning, you could run in the morning and then, of course, uh, run in the evening as well. If you're looking to pull off a double, it'll give you a good idea of what it feels like to train for one of those relay races. So, you know, I, I like to do I like to do it all. I, I like the mornings, but also enjoy the afternoon and evenings as well. So it's good. Uh, I've run not many times early in the morning. So <laughs> I've really liked it. It's like one of those. I was like, oh, I feel so good for the rest yeah. of the day. But it's nice to get it. Here's what I will yeah, say. It's it nice in. to get it done. And the big advantage of running in the morning is nothing can pop up. That's true. Yeah. You know, because we've been here at work and me and you have both been like, hey, I'm going to run after work. And all of a sudden a meeting goes long and something happens at home and you're like, I can't run today. Yeah. And so and, that's the big advantage. And even uh, like de- decision fatigue, there was, uh-huh. I remember reading, uh, it was a study or a book was talking about a study that Stanford did. You've heard of it, the marshmallow experiment? Ever heard of that? Yes, I have. So they, I love if, that. If you guys haven't heard it, they've got a bunch of kids in a room and gave them marshmallows and um, or, or put marshmallows in front of them and said, you can mm-hmm. uh, don't eat them. But if you wait, we'll give you two. Yep. So some of it was just seeing how many folks would eat early. But then they would measure. I forget how they measured it. But basically, if they had a harder time making choices after that or easier. Mm-hmm. And those that had like not eaten the marshmallow and given in, it's like all of their like self-control was gone. So it was a lot harder later yeah. in the day. So I know for me, like if I push something off to late, like by the time I get to the choice, it's like, all right, am I really going to do this? Mm-hmm. I'm just like, forget it. Like I'm already, all my decisions yeah. already wasted throughout the day. So getting it knocked out early before I even have time to like talk myself out of it. I'm with you because you can get mentally exhausted during the day or stressed and you're just like, man, I just want to, I just want to be done. So, and Chelsea, that's a really good question. I, I think a lot of times it depends on Chelsea's questions. I can never figure out how to balance balance my eating and, uh, and how to schedule evening runs you're eating and evening runs and i agree I, I for me i try to do something if i'm going to do something in the evening i try to do something really light at around five or six nothing too heavy and i try to give it usually a couple hours for me is good and then so it turns into a more of a snackish or light meal uh evening for me instead of a heavy heavy meal but i try and do something uh, usually a couple hours before i run and usually i'm in good shape anything heavier than that or uh closer to that it gets a little bit more difficult but it you're right that is a that is definitely a stress stress reading a lot of times i'll run right after work i like kind of the five o'clock runs in the summer the five o'clock runs are not a ton of fun i did that the other day and it was it was a scorcher yeah yeah uh, so yeah, let us know if you guys are listening in, whether on Facebook. Again, if you guys are listening to us on Facebook, um, we are over on Crowdcast. That is where usually if the feed drops, we can catch you still. So there's I just dropped a link in there. But if you guys are listening to the replay, uh, we would love to know what you guys do. Hit us up on Twitter at Connect Run Club. Uh, but if you run early versus running late. So um, good stuff. All right. So this first question, real question. Um, This one's coming in from Stephen Hildago. Uh, He said, what is everyone's favorite nutritious thing to eat after a run? I always find myself eating cereal, mainly Cheerios. Not Captain Crunch? Not Captain Crunch. (laughs) Uh, I love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Might be my best. I, I love that. So, what about what's, you? What's your favorite kid cereal? Like if you were if you were to go sugar, cinnamon toast crunch, so, yeah, or Lucky Charms, that's pretty good without any of like the not marshmallows. Yeah, so pick them all out. Yeah, that's that's what I like. Actually, I I responded to this thread. I I, I must have read over the fact he said nutritious. Uh huh. And when I do long runs, I always crave pizza by the yeah. end. And like yeah. I've actually ordered pizza on a run because it used to be we'd have a Papa John's right by mm-hmm. where I lived, and so yeah. I just run to Papa John's, get the pizza, and go home. Yeah. So now, not nutritious. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm with you, but hey, you know, here's the thing. I I I do agree with you at some point. Now, especially for my long runs, I like to celebrate it a little bit. But here's the thing: it usually takes me some time to get my stomach to reboot. I'm usually not hungry right after. Yeah. But you know what I do in and I don't know how nutritious this is, but it just, it kind of works for me. 
and I don't do it all the time, but I, f- I feel even weird saying this. You know those, uh, I think they're called Insure. They're, you know, nutrition shakes, and they're, you know, a lot of seniors, adults will drink them, I yes. guess. I'm, yeah, yeah. But, but if you look, they've got a great combination of carbohydrates and protein. Yeah. And that's why I like it. And so it's, I can usually keep it right in my car. You know, a lot of, you know, that you want to try and take in that protein and carbohydrate mix right after you get done running. You don't want to wait more than 45 minutes or an hour. So it gives you something you can throw in the car, throw in the gym bag and drink right after. Uh, but I tell you what, for me, I don't know what it is, but I crave watermelon after I get done. I am a watermelon guy. So after a long run or something like that, I eat watermelon. So that's probably it for me. I, uh, the other thing that I do like, I do like, uh, usually after a long run, I do like protein. Yeah. So I can usually go, I know it doesn't sound healthy, but if you don't, if you don't order a, a pound of fries with a hamburger, a hamburger to me is really, really good after a run. Because yeah. again, it gives me that protein. I would, that just, protein. I would just eat all the fries. Yeah, I understand usually. that. I understand that. Um, but yeah, so, so what we're saying is you can eat like a kid like me and eat pizza or eat like you a retired person and have insure. After. Ha- so you could have insure. You, yeah, either be like a 10-year-old or like a 70-year-old. Yes, our, like, I drink what the 70-year-old drinks. I don't do yeah. it every day, but I, a good, lot though. of times if it's if I'm close to home, I don't. But if I'm not close to home, I like to be able to get something in. Because honestly, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but the, the longer you wait after you run, the hunger you get and the more you crave stuff. So yeah. if you can take something in right after, a lot of times that helps with those cravings you start experience, which, you know, the other thing for me, this is this is a weird one, but Chinese food. Man, right yeah, after a long Chinese run, so I'm good. just like, you got all the salt and everything in it. I'm yeah. just like, throw down with yeah. some sweet and sour chicken or something like that. I'm yeah. just like, give it to me. Uh, for those of you guys that are listening, we'd love to know uh, what your guy's favorite, uh, favorite thing is, whether it is food uh, or yeah, favorite food after a run. So let yep. us know over at Crowdcaster on Facebook. Okay, um, we're gonna move right along, and so this question is coming from Caroline Latch. I believe I don't, I'm not sure if I pronounced her last name right, but Caroline asks, "I love running into the sunrise, but get nervous running in the dark with the mm-hmm. potholes in my country roads. Um, what do you use to see well enough to run in the dark?" Black diamond. Don't go cheap on your head on your headlamp. headlamp. I promise you. Don't don't go cheap. You know, you can you can get some really expensive headlamps and, and don't pay attention to all the lumens stuff because lumens uh, if you look on the box, you can have some that say, Hey, you have this many lumens and you're like, Oh, that's great. Lumens don't mean crap. Excuse me, but they just don't. Yeah, really. What you're not matters? A lumen, you're not a lumen fan. No, because it it doesn't it doesn't show you the quality of the light. You know what I mean? Honestly, you get what you pay for. If you pay yeah. for a if you buy a headlamp for less than thirty bucks, you're going to get what you pay for. Yeah. So, uh, and Black Diamond, they if you if you look out there on any reviews for headlamps, they're always at the top. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're very reliable. And I think they make some now. I don't have one, but I think they make some now that have rechargeable batteries because that it does have heavy battery use and the other thing that that i have used as well uh yeah you have to be careful on the cheap ones too because the cheap ones are not water resistant and that your sweat's going to get in inside the battery and so forth and mess it up but the other one is i also at sometimes depends on the road i run on I carry a headlamp. It's good for for cars coming by. So I will wear the headlamp and then I'll carry a flashlight. I'm sorry, I'll carry a flashlight okay. and I'll I'll flick the flashlight as cars are approaching. And it also the thing you have to worry about a headlamp is it's only shining where you're looking. Yep. And so sometimes you can get caught off guard if you're not looking in the right place. So that's the reason if you don't mind carrying something, uh, there you go, black diamond. We're gonna we're pulling up a link for you guys. We'll put it in the show notes uh, for you guys listening in. And if you guys are live with us, we're gonna drop it um, over in Crowdcast. So, um, wow, that's a huge link. So yeah, but yeah, so that that would be my recommendation is don't go cheap because you're right. Uh, you know, I had a uh, a running buddy. Uh, we were just getting started on the run the other day, and there is a curb right outside the elementary school, and he was stepping off the curb, and he stepped in a hole, Ooh. and he fell on his wrist and got all scratched up. So, yeah, you have to be, you have to take it really, really easy out there. And uh, I mean, as you'll see, the black diamonds are a little bit more expensive, but you are going to be so happy with the black diamond; it's not even funny. So, there. 
And the other thing that a lot of these headlamps do, you don't always have to use it, but uh, most of them have uh, have kind of a red light as well. And yep, the red light will helps. keep your eyes from dilating as too. So so that is, that's another good feature. So, but again. What I, about I, like reflective gear? Do you do that or you just, oh yeah. you just use your lights to count as that? Yeah, I use reflective gear. In fact, I don't know if I've got it in my car. You know, I've got this, I've got this vest that lights up and changes colors. Yes. So you, you see me. Yeah. I guarantee you. I've had too many close calls. I've had to jump in the ditch way too many times. So I I wear a, a vest that lights up and I wear uh I wear reflectors on my ankles and uh and so I I, I try and light up the best I can. Then I usually carry that flashlight to be flashing yeah. at cars because out there where we live, it just have we've had too many things happen. So Yeah. And this doesn't necessarily have to be running in the morning because especially in the winter. I mean, once you're getting off, at least where we are, um, down in the south by, I mean, by like 530, it's getting dark. Yeah. I mean, you need something if you're going out for a yeah. run. So um, I, I, I've definitely used headlamps before. And, and they stick on your head. Like, you'd be surprised. Like, oh, they don't. Yeah. Once you kind of get it dialed in, it, it doesn't bounce around a ton. And so no. it helps a good bit. And most of those black diamonds even have a strap on the, on top, the top as part. well to yeah. keep it from drip. But, yeah, I, I literally have never had a problem with slippage of a headlamp because once you get it on there, you don't usually think about it. So. No, no, you don't. We are not sponsored by Black Diamond. Black so, Diamond. I'll say I used to rock climb a lot, and I had a lot uh-huh. of Petzl um, headlamps. Really? So they were like trail hiking, that kind of stuff, too. Yeah. So yeah, ch- check them out. And I'm sure the running, like specific running companies will have some, too. But Definitely. if you go more to the trail side of things, you'll probably get something a little nicer quality. Yeah, and you yeah. can read some reviews, I would imagine. on. Uh, I- I've read a lot of reviews. I think Outside Magazine, if I'm not mistaken, they've done a great yeah. job yeah. of reviewing gear. And I guarantee you can find probably... Google the top 2016 headlamps, and I guarantee you they'll give you the latest models. Yep. But Find a deal. Yep. Cool. Sweet. So, all right, moving right along. Um, this one kind of has to go with gear, and I, I threw it up there. This was the the um, on our Facebook group we do a would, would you rather, not a would you rather, but basically mm-hmm. voting on something on Wednesdays, would you rather Wednesdays. And so this was basically asking folks what is their favorite brand for a running watch. And... Um, I thought this was time sensitive or yeah. appropriate because of the announcements yesterday with Apple because they have a new Apple Watch coming out that has GPS built in. So before you'd have to run with your mm-hmm. phone. Um, and it's uh, waterproof up to like 150 feet, yeah. like 50 meters. And so you can uh, swim with it. It's got laps and stuff too. It's crazy. So they're, it's starting to get like a le- legitimate potential mm-hmm. running. And they, they have a yeah. deal with uh, Nike. There's like a Nike specific Apple watch now too, or you can do it in the normal mm. ones. But what about mm. you? What, what are your favorite? My favorite watch is the next one. I have, I have, okay. so I, I have, I, okay, I, I'll, I'll clarify that. So I have Tom Tom. I do have a Tom Tom. Okay. I also have a couple of different Garmin's, models of Garmin's, and I have a, I have a Soleus. I have that. Okay. And I have, I think it's a Sun, Sun Tu? Is that how you pronounce it? I don't yeah, know, that, that's, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. So I have those, uh, and I'll be honest with you. I, I think they each bring something different. Uh, the the Garmin I have the three ten. I have two Garmins. One of them is a three ten. That one I really like because I can do so much with it. The Tom Tom I like because I think it's very reliable and it also has a it has big place for the number, so I can easily see where my mileage and stuff is. Yeah. Having said that, I will say from a use of, from a usability and from a knowing how to use information and being able to figure it out quickly, I can much easier pick up on what a Garmin is doing than anything else. Yeah, so that was good. with without having to read a manual, which I had to do for Tom Tom, I can pick up your Garmin no matter what, and I can within a couple of minutes figure it out. Yeah. So that is my, and I think Garmin's been doing it longer probably and listening to the runners longer yeah. that they know how to I feel like they know how to make it simple now I'm not saying they make the best GPS but I'm saying from a user standpoint being yeah. able to figure it out quickly that's what I like about Garmin I think each of them brings something different and I I, I like I, I could run with any of them but I find myself going back to the Garmin especially when I'm looking for some specific use like if I'm going to the track I know how I can take my Garmin 310 and easily do my do my repeats and hit the hit the lap button right. i know exactly how to use it some of the others it gets a little more difficult yeah, like to figure out. that makes yeah. sense yeah we got some folks in the comments let's see dr b said she has an apple watch uh, but she doesn't use it for running she likes the sanutu ambit three there run 
Uh, she also has a, a Garmin 610, but the GPS is slow. And let's see, Chelsea has a Forerunner 220. That's the one oh, I yeah. used to have. That's a good one. Um, and I liked it a lot. But it eventually got to the point where the GPS took a really long time to connect. Yeah. Which I'm interested to see if anybody in the office does get one of the new Apple watches. Um, because they had mentioned that it's like instantaneous. It doesn't actually have to connect to GPS to start out. Like somehow yep. it tracks, I guess, just by movement. And then it yep. connects and syncs up. So um, you can get going. But yeah, I'd uh, love to know what you guys think um, listening in. Um, if you guys are in our group, Facebook group, let us know and um, vote. And I think, let's listen, I think Garmin is winning, if I remember right. Yeah, you should have seen my first my first Garmin. It was like it was like a computer monitor on your wrist. I had one of those really, really big ones. It was like, yeah. a, had, it was like having a computer on your wrist. The first time I saw it, I saw someone at the peach tree. I was like, what is that? Yeah, uh, Garmin is winning by far. Uh, oh so yeah, definitely, see that. definitely the most popular mm-hmm. of any of the ones that we've got out there. So, uh, yeah, uh, the Forerunner 310. We're getting comments. They're saying it's it's pretty pretty large. Yeah, is that the one that Mark Mullis, who we've had on the podcast before? No, yeah, no. Th- this one, this one, this was one of the original uh, garments okay. that was out there, and it was my wife still use it. It's so that does you how good is. Yeah. I think I bought it in like two. Th- I don't know. It was like two thousand six, seven, okay. something like that, and it still works great. She still right. uses it, but I'm telling you, this thing is enormous. You know that you're a hardcore runner when you have those on. <laughs> those are good. Okay. So, uh, yeah, favorite run and watch. Let us know. Uh, and we've got a, a couple more questions. And, again, if you guys have any questions you want us to answer, uh, let us know in the comments. Um, all right. So this one is coming in from Patricia Evans Best. She asks, I'm entering the Monster Miles portion of my marathon training, and I'm definitely struggling with the battle between the mind and the body. I'm trying to break things up into smaller chunks, but I gladly take any. I thought we answered this last week. No, did we, we did because I mispronounced yeah. Monster before. So yeah, never mind. We, we answered that. Go back to our last episode two episodes ago. There you go. There you um, go. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll skip that one. Sorry. Right. Um, all right. So this one's coming from Braden Wheeler. Uh, who just asked us, have you tried abstaining from coffee for a race? Does it make a big difference come race day? I drink coffee and usually take caf- uh, caffeine in my gels. If I abstain prior, will it actually have a noticeable difference? Well, I, I have tried it, and it was – I think you have to experiment with a little bit because it – here's what I did. This was the week of a marathon when I tried it, and it was my very first marathon, and it was the stupidest thing I ever did. It wasn't just the – Honestly, Braden, it just really wasn't just the caffeine, but it was like I changed everything I did that week. I was trying to eat as clean as possible. I was trying to drink as much water as possible. And I I think one thing you want to do as a runner, this is what I have learned. This is my first marathon mistake. I changed everything. In reality, you don't want to change anything. That's my opinion. Now, uh, I, I I think if you want to try something, great. But in, in sorry, sorry, for a 10K, a, yeah, this is a okay. 10K yeah. even still, I mean, I'm just always concerned concern uh, i'm just always concerned about changing a whole lot but I, I think it's great to experiment and there's no doubt about it so uh but i would try it even before some of your uh, some of your runs to say hey what does it look like are you going to do like a tempo run leading up to that do you have something similar distance because what i like to do for the for the we have the peachtree road race in atlanta and usually a week or two before the race, I go actually run the course and I don't do the exact pace, but I do pretty quick just just to give myself what it feels like. So a lot of times I will replicate everything that day. So I will replicate that week, kind of what I'm going to eat, what I'm going to drink, what time I'm going to run. So I try and and make it as much like the race race in race environment as possible. So. Hey, I, I think for a 10K, I would feel a little bit better, but uh, I think it's worth, I'm not, I certainly think it's worth trying. Just, I wouldn't alter anything, but I, 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 I've i come a creature of habit with my running. I don't really change anything now. I, what you see day in and day out is what I do for a race, but. Yeah. Have you ever thought about caffeine in terms of how it would affect it? No. I know a lot of people have, mm-hmm. but I have heard if you stay away from it, it's supposed to, it, you know, the caffeine is going to help you on race day from my understanding, but I've never experimented with it. I know a lot of people have stay away from it for a couple of weeks or even a month. And then on race day, use caffeine that day and even with their gels and so forth. Gotcha. So. That makes sense. Well, cool. Um, 
All right, let's see. We've got a, a one more question. We're going to be a little bit shorter this week because we actually did another Q&A on Tuesday, so just a couple of days ago. Um, all right, so this is coming from Shannon Sherman. Uh, she asks, does anyone use a running app to help them do tempo runs? If so, which ones do you use? I try by myself, and I'm trying to increase my speed. Yeah. Uh that's a good question. I don't really use apps because I don't take a phone or anything while I run. Yeah. So, but I will say this: I used to use a podcast. Okay, uh, there was a podcast that it was called BPM, and in fact, Jenny Hadfield used to be associated with it, and uh-huh. it would play music at specific, and you could download the BPM you were looking for. So it was a oh, 170 cool. beats yeah. a minute, 180, and the whole podcast would, it, would, it wouldn't it would be the same song the whole time, but the beat would always be the same. Right. And so it would keep you on rhythm. Now, I will challenge you, if you're looking to do something different on tempo runs, uh, tempo runs are, are approached differently by different people, and uh, if you're trying to mix it up a little bit, I'll give you something that I use as far as tempo runs. Again, everyone does tempo runs different. If you look like if you look up a tempo run you'll see hey they're all over the place some people believe it's like a a warm-up and a cool down then it's like what three four five six miles at this pace yeah i prefer this i prefer to like turn up the heat like on the stove so i will use it get it really really cranking near the end of it so now i'm 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 moving pretty decent but i like to pick it up as i go so and i'll give you if you want to try something different shannon i've got a this is one i love to do in fact i have i prescribed this for my son who, who does a cross country and i tell him to run out for 20 minutes and then no it's 21 minutes i tell him to run out for 20 minutes is it 20 or 20? I don't know. But anyway, I try and have him better that time coming back. So that way he's not really concerned about pace, but he is concerned about trying to get faster. So I think there's some different ways you can mix it up. So if you're feeling stale at all on the tempo runs, I would mix it up a little bit and, yeah. and try some different tempo runs. Try to do something different. Because look, I've got I've got friends of mine I know they run the same things every single week, and they also get the same results every single weekend because they do the same workouts every single week. It's just like if you if you not you don't go to the gym and do the exact same workout every single week. So I would challenge you if you're doing the same workout and same tempo run every week, mix that bad boy up and try something different. Yeah, that's good. Um, we had a couple good. Uh, comments coming in kind of answering this apparently garmin connect i've never seen this but um there's i guess they have a tempo function on their uh on their app and so they connect the app to the watch through the phone nice uh then i have heard of this so spotify has a running playlist mm-hmm. that you can set by beats per minute it's almost like oh, what you're talking about with jenny hatfield yep. so if you guys have spotify and you're running with it uh, i'm pretty sure it's just a slider and you literally slide over it and it, and it cues up songs at that mm-hmm. beats per minute if you got something you're trying to hit and then let's see the uh, garmin phoenix 3 uh caroline is saying there is a metronome feature to it and so she says her cadence is 190 to 200, so moving pretty quick. Wow. And um, you can Who just r- run to the beat. Uh, Caroline wow. Latch, yeah. who was asking the question oh, yeah. a little bit earlier. She, so That's quick cadence right there. Cool. Yeah, gracious. very, very fast. So, uh, so yeah, there's a, a bunch of different ways for you guys to do it, whether it's the old school ways yeah. that, that Trey's mentioning, or like we said, there's some apps out there. And uh, Spotify stuff I have used before, and that's kind of fun. So mm-hmm. get, you, get you moving. Let's go. Um, well, good stuff, guys. Well, that is all that we have for you this week. We'll be back next week, 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, over here at the Connect Run Club podcast, Q&A with Coach Trey. Uh, you guys can find it over on Crowdcast, or if you're on our Facebook group, um, you can hit us up. And again, we've just launched our Patreon page. And so if you guys like what we're, what we're doing and you want to support the show, um, head on over to connectrunclub.com forward slash Patreon and uh, figure out all the stuff that we're doing. And I'm going to drink my caffeine. And I'm going to drink some water because <laughs> I might be swimming in a minute. So, not with an Apple Watch because I can't buy one yet. So. <laughs> All righty, guys. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week. See you guys.